When you're talking about compact executive saloons, especially entry-level ones, it kind of feels a little bit uh, insincere. See, when you think about a luxury car, you're thinking soft leather, nice appointments, a generally luxurious and slightly excessive place to be. But when you think about entry-level compact luxury saloons, that's not really the case. More often than not, you see some degree of compromise in order to hit a certain price point that makes sense in order for it to appeal to a broader market. So if you're on the market for a entry-level compact executive saloon, you might end up feeling a little bit shortchanged. Now, Volkswagen does not want you to feel unhappy. So instead of a compact executive saloon, why not a large four-door coupe with almost 300 horsepower and all-wheel drive and looks to kill? I apologize, it's dirty because the weather is shit. But despite that, feast your eyes on the facelifted Volkswagen Arteon R-Line. Now, I must also apologize for the sunglasses because we're now facing the sun. But despite that, you just have to look, take one good look at the Volkswagen Arteon and you know that this thing is slightly different. Even though it actually shares its platform with the Volkswagen Passat, you certainly wouldn't or shouldn't compare the two cars because this is very clearly the more exuberant and uh, expressive sibling. At the front, you get this very low Predator face with very slim headlights that are integrated seamlessly into the bumper. As part of the facelift, you now get a light bar that goes all the way across, broken up only by the new Volkswagen badge in the middle. Because this is an R-Line model, you get a more aggressive front bumper with contrasting black inserts and nice, interesting integration of body-coloured panels, again, to make the car look more expressive. Down the side, you have gorgeous 19-inch dual-tone alloy wheels with a diamond-cut finish wrapped in Pirelli P0 tyres for maximum performance capability without compromising NVH. And of course, <clears throat> you can't talk about four-door coupe without talking about the roofline. And this roofline swoops all the way back in this very gentle curve and it just looks absolutely stunning. You also get frameless doors because all good performance cars have them and from this angle you probably notice that actually there is a lot of metal from the B segment backward and that speaks a lot about interior volume where things again change a little bit over the Volkswagen Passat. Now at the back with the facelift you now get a set of clear lens taillights with coloured inserts which I don't really know how I feel about them. I feel like the pre facelift had a neater design, but this is certainly more expressive. So even though I'm a little bit on the fence, I kind of accept why they're here. And overall, they're not exactly offensive. You also get a lip spoiler done in black. You also get a little bit of chrome down at the bottom of the bumper. And you get fake exhaust tips, which is a recurring VW theme. But of course, this is not you know, to make it look bad, but rather so that in the event of a low-speed rearward accident, it won't affect and or damage the exhaust system. Now, I call this a four-door coupe, but technically it's a five-door because the boot is not a boot, it's a hatchback, it's a liftback, as it were. So the entire rear panel with the rear windscreen lifts up to give you access to this absolutely ginormous boot. Now, this is where if one were to argue that a four-door coupe is less practical than a saloon, for example, this is where you can tell them that they're wrong. Because this access makes it a lot easier to load and unload compared to the Volkswagen Passat. You still get a bit of a lip here, or quite a lot of lips, about that deep. But the space itself is very usable. There are also a couple of hooks on either side where you can hook on a bag. The car also comes as standard with a net so that you can tie things down so they don't roll around when you're driving exuberantly in your exuberant four-door performance coupe. And of course, you do have this stiff parcel shelf here. I mean, you can remove it, but it's a bit of a palaver and you know, forget it. Now, underneath the boot floor, there's actually a full-size 19-inch alloy wheel so that in case the worst happens when you're out 
touring or adventuring, you can just replace the tyre by the roadside without having to wait for roadside assistance to come and help you. Now, this tailgate, as you saw earlier, is electrically operated, but it also comes with a kick to open and kick to close function, which sometimes doesn't work, especially when you're on camera trying to demonstrate it, but it will eventually do it after it beeps a little while to let you know that it's understood the response. Please close. Oh, I'm supposed to walk away from it. Now let's talk about the interior. Now, in the pre-facelift Volkswagen Arteon, there was some criticisms about how its interior looked very, very similar to the Volkswagen Passat. Now, Volkswagen has heard you, and so now they've changed it a lot. So you now get these new R-Line sports seats, which are wrapped in lovely soft leather with this leather carbon fibery thing going on. Um, which reminds me a lot of my old Satra Neo R3 executive. Um, you also get a new dashboard design, which is very different from the Passat, where you have slim aircon vents up top. You have this nice sort of patchwork metal aluminium trim sort of all around the cabin, and it looks absolutely fantastic. And because the Arteon is a more premium product, compared to the Volkswagen Passat, you can tell that a little bit more attention has been paid to the details. So you now get sort of this faux leather up on the dash and on the door cards, which are stitched and they feel very, very nice. You also get Harman Kardon audio, which is very, very nice. You can definitely sort of, since we can't go to clubs, you can go clubbing in your car. And if you do, you can get club lights in here because there are 30 ambient colors to choose from. Now, all, the, on the matter of ambient colours and so on. All of that is controlled via the centre infotainment screen, which being from Volkswagen is a very large capacitive touchscreen and it is very, very easy to use. The navigation is great, the menu layout is great, it's very responsive. Although admittedly, once I turned on the car and it didn't turn on, which was a bit weird, I had to get out and restart the car and all, and then it was fine. And I haven't had that issue since, but it does come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, with wireless Android Auto at that. But weirdly, it doesn't come with a wireless charger, which means if you want to charge your device, you still have to plug it in anyway which is weird. Now, you also get new um, HVAC controls, which are also touch sensitive. You now slide for temperature, you slide for fan speed, and you touch these capacitive buttons for things like the recirc and also the seat heaters. This car is built in Pekan Pahang and comes with seat heaters, which is a bit hit and miss. Um, I like the presentation, yes, but the fact that I now have to sort of move my gaze from the road in order to make changes is a little bit weird. That also applies to the steering wheel, which now is a new design R-Line steering wheel, which also features capacitive touch buttons. I do not understand this fascination with removing buttons from things, because buttons are nice, um, but now everything is touched. There is a bit of haptic feedback, of course, from the steering wheel, but it isn't great. I would have much preferred buttons. But moving on to good things, at least despite the passive buttons, you now get the new Volkswagen logo in the middle. And then behind the steering wheel, which is adjustable for both reach and rake, you get a digital instrument cluster, just like last time, which is very nice, very fast refresh rates, and great levels of customizability. And mercifully, unlike the Mark 8 Golf, you still get an actual dial for the lights, which is really nice. Now, in terms of the driving position, being a Volkswagen, everything is exactly the way it should be. These seats are very supportive. They come with lumbar support, both on the passenger and driver's side. The driver's side is dual memory with lumbar and a massage function. I believe they call it ergo comfort, which is basically the lumbar support kind of going in and out to pretend like it's giving you a massage from like a lethargic foreign lady. Um, but, you know, at least it's there, and that's great. And the dual memory is also very helpful should you be sharing this car with a significant other or a housemate. Although, at this price point, maybe you shouldn't have a housemate. Um, <clears throat> but what it does mean, of course, that you are always in the best possible position to be enjoying this car, either for touring or for spirited driving. Now, in the back, like I said earlier, the back of this car is very spacious. The wheelbase of this car is slightly different from the Passat, and so the rear accommodation is slightly more 
cavernous. The Passat was already a big car, but this is big -er. You have plenty of legroom, and despite the coupe roofline, you still have plenty of headroom, even if you're my height. I'm just under 170 centimeters, which means there is a decent amount of space back there, particularly for Malaysians driving other Malaysians around. This car actually comes with triple zone climate control, which means that rear passengers have the ability to change their climate temperature settings. And there are also rear air con vents in the middle in order to ensure that rear passengers are comfortable. There are no privacy blinds, not on the rear windscreen or the side windows, but this car comes as standard with Volkswagen tint, which does an excellent job at both sort of reducing glare, but also cutting UV rays. You also get Isofix mounts because duh. And overall, it's a nice place to be for two passengers or maybe three at a push. Now, enough jabbering about the interior accoutrements in the Volkswagen Passat R-Line. This car looks great, but it's also great to drive. At least that's what Volkswagen tells us. So let's go and talk about that now. Now, driving the Volkswagen Arteon. This is a car that we've waited for for quite some time. We requested for the pre facelift model multiple times, but there were always issues either with scheduling or availability. And uh, eventually, when the facelift came out, we again asked many, many times to sample this car, and only now are we being given a chance to drive it. Now, with the facelift, there was a big update to the powertrain so now this engine produces 280 ps and over 300 newton meters of torque with power going to all four wheels via a four motion all-wheel drive system and a seven speed dual clutch automatic gearbox this of course is a huge upgrade over the outgoing car. The pre facelift car made something some 90 PS less than this. And of course, it was only front wheel drive. Of course, that powertrain was a lot more frugal, but it didn't quite match the very exuberant style of the Volkswagen Arteon. People were asking for something with a bit more punch and a bit more poke. And I guess now with the facelift, that request has finally been fulfilled. Now, what that means is that the Arteon now has a significant performance advantage over the Volkswagen Passat upon which it's based. As a result, those who are not necessarily fulfilled by uh, the performance on offer from the Volkswagen Passat can now step up into an Arteon and enjoy even more punch and even more poke. Of course, the Arteon and the Passat are two very different vehicles. Even though they share the same platform and ultimately the same powertrains, although admittedly not in this market, the uh, Arteon presents itself very differently from the Passat. This is meant to be the sportier, more engaging car to drive, which is why the Arteon is available in Malaysia exclusively as an R-Line model. As a result, you get an R-Line steering wheel, you get these one-piece R-Line seats, and you also get dynamic chassis control as well as engine sounds you get into the cabin and uh, overall it does present itself in a very engaging way the seating position is absolutely perfect you get a lot of um, ability to customize the way this car drives in terms of the damping you can go from very very soft to very very stiff depending on what your mood prefers you of course have drive modes where you have comfort eco and sport and normal and you also have an individual mode where you can set up everything to your liking when i drive this car i prefer it to be in individual mode where i have the uh, suspension set up in the softest most setting the steering wheel in sport and the engine sound on Although my video editor, who also drove this car, prefers everything to be up to 10 tenths, but with the engine in eco, because he's slightly odd like that. But in terms of the driving experience, however, it is, like I said, quite engaging. You can take this car over longer distances, like uh, on tourings, uh, or when you're driving, you know, going on holiday and stuff like that. And this car will do that very, very well. It's very planted, it's very composed on the motorway, especially at higher cruising speeds. And uh, in terms of space, of course, there's plenty of room in here for four adults, so five in a pinch. And when you're driving at that sort of speed, they'll be quite comfortable in this car as all the seats in here are very supportive and very cosseting. 
but there are a few things that are worth pointing out. Number one, NVH levels in here are not necessarily as low as you would expect. If you were to compare this to say a BMW 3 Series or an Audi A4, this car is definitely a little bit disappointing in that regard. There is a little bit more wind and road noise. But in terms of engine noise, this car is very well muted, which is why of course there are those engine noises and engine sounds that are piped into the cabin to make everything a little bit more exciting. But again, in terms of wind and road noise, it is ever so slightly behind premium car makers, of course. And then there's the fact that this car's safety equipment isn't perhaps as impressive as it ought to be. While it does come with lane keep assist and blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert and a 360 degree camera, which is pretty good for a Volkswagen in this market, it is a shame that this car does not come with the full gamut of level 2 semi-autonomous features like adaptive cruise control and autonomous emergency braking. That said though, we're made to understand that Arteon buyers are not that fussy about stuff like this and so Volkswagen Passenger Cars Malaysia made the decision to spec this car the way it is based on customer feedback so we can't really give them too much grief for that. It's just that the lack of AEB feels a little bit not nice, you know. For a car very nearly 250,000, 240 odd thousand ringgit for the Volkswagen RTL. The fact it doesn't come with AEB is a, a little bit weird, especially given the fact that entry level cars in this country are now available with AEB. But in terms of interior accoutrements, it's very clear that this car has been spec to feel very premium. The stitched uh, door tops and dash tops, the Harman Kardon audio system, the big touchscreen infotainment system, all of these things really contribute to a very premium feeling interior. And that sort of is aligned with what this car competes against. See, the Arteon in the Malaysian market doesn't have any natural competitors, which means that at 240 odd thousand ringgit, this car goes head to head with compact executive saloons. Cars like the BMW 3 Series, the Mercedes Benz C Class, the Audi A4, and it provides a left of field alternative. For buyers who may be in the market for a C200 Mercedes Benz, for example, or a 320i, instead of getting a car which is ultimately a base model and so is bereft of some of the nice look at me features you can get a fully loaded fully equipped Volkswagen Arteon which has more power more performance and more features than both of those cars put together but of course you can't deny the fact that there is a matter of badge appeal if you want a Mercedes-Benz you'll buy a Mercedes-Benz if you want a BMW you'll buy a BMW that's just how that works but the Arteon again aims to provide an alternative. If you want an alternative, there is one available to you. Now, as someone who has owned several premium cars over the years, many of which were actually compact executive saloons, be it the Lexus IS I had for a while or the several BMW 3 Series um, that I've owned over the years, I must say that if I was in a similar position today to buy a car sort of within this price range, the Arteon would certainly be at the top of my list. Yes, while I certainly appreciate the luxury of a Mercedes-Benz C-Class and I appreciate the turn of speed, there are two main areas where this car, to me, delivers better. One is in terms of practicality because this car is sizably, noticeably larger than the competition. This is ultimately based off of a D-segment platform, whereas the compact ex executive saloons are more similar to C-segment vehicles. And so the additional space that you get in here, both for cargo as well as for passengers, is very noticeable. And secondly, it is in terms of presence. As you know, the base level C-Class is available in Malaysia as a non-AMG line model. And the 3 Series is also available in Malaysia. The 320i is not available as an M Sport. And so that slight lack of road presence or even presence in a car park means that an Arteon will stand out. It also means that when you're in the corporate car park, for example, where many, many, many a young executive would like a C-Class or a 3 Series as a company car, by standing out with a Volkswagen Arteon, you are setting yourself apart from the competition. This, of course, matters to some people more than it does to others. And to me, being able to stand out is certainly something that I appreciate, which is why I would personally prefer a Volkswagen Arteon. This car is not perfect, but it perfectly does what it aims to do, which is to be different and to appeal to people who want to be different. Driving this car around over the last 
six days or so. I cannot count the number of people who have turned and craned their necks in order to catch a glimpse of the Volkswagen Arteon. Be it out on the road, be it in town, be it even in car parks in a high-end hotel where I went for a wedding. People were staring at this thing going, wow, what is that? And on social media, on my Twitter account especially, this car has turned up a storm with people coming out to say, this is an incredibly beautiful machine, which it certainly is. Over the last six days, I cannot count the number of times I have turned to catch another glimpse of this car as I'm walking away. It is an incredibly beautiful thing and the fact that it drives so well and presents itself in such a polished manner means that it's very, very difficult to fault this car. I would absolutely recommend one to anyone in the market for something within the 200 to 250,000 ringgit price range. This is a very impressive machine and it's certainly something that will deliver many smiles for many, many miles to some very satisfied and happy owners. Anyway, that's been the Malaysian Motoring Review of the Volkswagen Arteon R-Line 4 Motion. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell icon, stay notified every time we make a new upload. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, all the links are in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, please stay safe, follow all SOPs, wear your mask at all times. This car is empty, which is why I'm not wearing mine, but I certainly hope that you will always wear yours when you're in public. Again, stay safe, jangan bodoh.